Hello, and welcome to another video. I'm Javier, this is Connor. Say hi. Hey! So we're doing a little different video for you all today. Basically what we're gonna do is go through our, some of our, the worst and the best films of 2021. Uh, I've been wanting to make this video for a while now. I've bought some new lights, particularly just for this video. Mm -hmm. But that's basically what we're gonna do. And Connor and I are just gonna briefly discuss as we go through the list. My list is a much bigger than his, but we have seen some films that we both have seen that we did go to see in the theater together. And that's basically- Some good ones, do. some very mm, questionable ones. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So go ahead, sit back, relax, and watch us discuss these. So let's go ahead and start. So I'm gonna start with my uh, worst one, mm. and then we'll go to yours, okay? Okay. Right, so my worst film of 2021 is Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> it's birthday time. I was planning on going to see that, but then I I canceled at the last moment because I was like, mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> I s rented this at home for 20 bucks and it was such a waste. It has Nicolas Cage in it. Right. And it is the biggest waste of Nicolas Cage I have ever seen in my life. He doesn't even do anything in the movie, right? He doesn't say one word of dialogue. That's right. <sighs> Nicolas Cage, who is known for giving his very funny, overdramatic, loud, obnoxious, memeable lines of dialogue, says nothing in this silly movie about animatronic bots trying to kill people. It's very poorly put together. The editing's kind of bad. The animatronics are not scary. They're like completely uncanny. Um, the plot makes no sense at all. It's completely stupid. It is the stupidest thing ever. It, 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 this, this script cannot work. It just cannot work if, if everyone had common sense. The characters are so unlikable. They're like the poor movie trope kind of deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, up. Oh, we have to have like a, it's like a dry sex scene in it. We can't have a horror movie without a sex scene, you know? So sex bad. scenes just don't work in horror movies, man. They really don't. Like, in the original movies of, like, Friday the 13th and stuff, the original stuff, yes, because it was goofy. It worked in its goofiness. Here, it doesn't work. It's annoying. It's not funny. It's annoying. It, people, some people, because I watched it with two other friends of mine. Mm -hmm. One agreed with me saying it was terrible. The other one said they found it so bad it was entertaining. So I guess that is kind of your preference, but just yeah. to me... I just, I just couldn't get into it. But and it's Nicolas Cage. I feel like he could have brought in He could have brought in some Nicolas Cage magic, but he was completely underutilized. It, it makes- Do you think that had to do something with the director or something, man? I don't know who made the choice to not give him lines. It's like, just, if you're gonna have Nicolas Cage in it, and like this movie is like, obviously no one's gonna take it seriously. Just, just, just go all out, just be funny. And you know, it's just, it's just not scary. It's just more stupid. None of the, none of the deaths, or that good and it's just it ends on such a silly note it literally ends with Nicolas Cage literally running over one of the animatronics with his Mustang so it's yeah it's just bad I don't recommend it I I like I said I rented it just to watch for the sake of this funness but uh, it was so bad that I like recorded like I, I just recorded it um, to keep on my computer I'm like you know you're not rip you're not ripping me off for this rent I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that, it's just terrible. So now, Connor, give me your worst of 2021. Personally, for me, it, it's from more from like a nostalgia point of view. It, it came almost down to a tie between two, but I put Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Or as I call it, Venom, Let There Be Garbage. Family. I... I had such high hopes for this movie, but when I think you and I went to go see it, I don't remember because I literally walked out of that theater was just like, I want to erase this movie with my mind, dude. But oh my gosh, you talk because I it's, can't even. Yeah, I was not technically <sighs> looking forward because I did not like the first movie. It had it had some funny moments in the first movie, but overall, I did not like anything about it. I like, I just don't find Venom interesting outside of Spider-Man. Like part of Venom's like character, it, like in terms of Eddie Brock and, and the symbiote is like how much they both hate Spider-Man and he's not in this. And it's just some, and it's just made into a comedy. This- Well, I don't, 
the comedy I don't mind, but from a mm, pacing standpoint, a logical standpoint, I'm just like, wait, what? It's broken. Yeah, it's broken. Like, Carnage, I didn't. Uh, like it was. Mm, Car Carnage was a waste. He was okay, but he wasn't utilized the way I thought he should be. No. And by the way, the. Oh my gosh. The girl. I hated her through the whole movie. I hated that chick from the very beginning. Yeah, I, 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 I don't just remember don't, her I name. don't like any shriek, whatever, something. She, she, she screams loudly, which, you know, if you know the symbiote's weaknesses, you're like, oh, then that's going to come into play. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, just... That's, I mean, I understand it, but... <laughs> I, we, I didn't like it. I, I, I didn't find it that funny. I found the plot completely illogical. I found none of the payoffs, like, emotionally satisfying. I didn't like the comedy. There's the only thing that was the cringiest moment was when Venom's like possessing other people, like when he mm -hmm. separates from uh, people. By the way, spoilers for every film that we talk about, pretty much. Okay, just hand, just give me the heads up. But like when he separates from Eddie and then like goes off and possess people, and he's like in the club, and they're like, "Oh, we love you and stuff." And then he makes like a little speech about accepting others for their differences. Yeah. It's like very obviously like uh, you know like. <laughs> I think like a political message on pro-immigration and stuff like what it's trying to shove in there. It's like, why is this in a Venom movie? Like, like seriously, like this is in a <laughs> Venom movie. It's like, we're going to put deep messaging in a Venom movie because Venom is the property to carry that deep messaging. The other thing with Venom and, oh my gosh, the plan for Carnage made no sense. Like, it made zero sense. Like, the whole thing with Carnage. He kills people just because he loves it. He kills maybe what, like... He also becomes Carnage out of... Because he just happened to bite... Um, Eddie. Eddie's hand, yeah. Which I'm like... I was just like, wait, what? It, no. You, what? No, this movie made... Let me, be, let me just say, though. I didn't mind Carnage. The symbiote. But everything else, I'm just like, please, like, man, please just. Let there's it. no characterization. There's just, there's nothing in this. And then, and then they have to, and then they have, and I'm like, well, Connor, we need to stay because there's apparently an after credit scene, and then we see it, and it's just like, oh, he's now in the Tom Holland cinematic universe. Yeah, they leap, they drag Tom Holland into it, which I'm just like, wait, what? No, they haven't even met. They've never met. Which, but yeah, which it makes no sense because the whole point, like, in, in regarding to Spider-Man No Way Home is the spell's supposed to bring anyone who knows that Peter Parker Spider-Man. It's like, Peter Parker doesn't exist in Venom's universe. Yeah. Or Spider-Man does not exist. It's like, so why is he there? It's just because uh, for the setup also, for the next movie. Also, the thing is with Venom, this movie's so out of place from the universe because he hasn't met Spider-Man. He hasn't met anyone else. So it's just so weird. It's mm -hmm. so weird seeing Venom on his own. I like Tom Hardy. Don't get me wrong. I love the guy. He was yeah. Bane. He was um, Mad Max. Mm -hmm. He was in another movie too. I can't remember though. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got range as an actor. But in this movie, I liked, I mean, I liked him, but I treated him like garbage. Did you notice that? But it's just... It's just bad. Don't watch it. I, you know, I basically... I mean, if you... Watch it from the point of view of like it's garbage. You'll be fine. <laughs> Watch it while well drunk at least. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I, I probably would watch it tr rather drunk. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's your worst, and that's my second worst. Um, that was a contender for my set for my first worst, but mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I, I hate Willie's more. Anyway, my next worst film is. Uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy. Oh, I never... Oh, my gosh. I... Welcome to the Space Jam. I'm going old school on his butt. If you want to see... I hated it. I mean, I, I never watched it. But here's the reason why I never watched it. You don't take a classic and do that they've done hollywood has done that to many classics Connor. yeah but <laughs> space jam dude michael jordan in his 
You're a big sports guy, which is why this, I guess, well, is Well, no, and also, I just love the original. I just rewatched the original Space Jam just to get that one out of my head, because I always... Wait, you said you didn't see it. Well, no, I just choose to forget it, because I never watched it. No, but just I forget choose... its existence. Like, you had to watch the original to forget the existence. Yes. Yeah. Like I was saying, if you want to watch an hour and a half commercial, yeah, watch Space Jam and New because it's just- They a don't even play Warner basketball, Brothers. do they? No, they play basketball. It's just not the actual basketball. It's like this, his kid's upgraded version of basketball with like power-ups and things, you know? It's like, what? yeah, it's not like, it's, it's, it's basically his kid's developing a basketball game with like power-ups and special moves and things like that. Okay. And they basically play that version of basketball. Okay. Of course, of course, and it's just commercial because in the entire time when they're like, 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 like it happens with um, basically the whole plot is regards to LeBron wanting his son to be something that he's not. And then his son is like, just let me be me. Let me program games and stuff. And he's like, no, you got to be a pro basketball player. And then basically a bunch of bum bum jumbo. They end up at Warner Bros. They end up in the server room. They get sucked into the server verse and then like gets and then a uh, freaking algae rhythm. That's the name of the villain played by Don Cheadle, uh, who plays War Machine in the MCU movies, um, huh. it's uh, just just sends them to the Looney Tunes, and then you go down there, and then it's like, it's all it's only Bugs Bunny, and then Bugs Bunny like, oh yeah, all my friends left. Algae Rhythm like show them other worlds to explore. It's like, okay, <laughs> so like Bugs Bunny's the only one that's there, and it's like, hey, help me get my friends back, and we'll like form a team to help get your son back from Algae Rhythm. Wait, but how did? Wait, but he went. They went to other worlds, but. Why would he want to? Wait, what? No, no, no. So, so it's like okay. So, they're like, let's go fetch our team and let's get their help. So, oh, they, so, they, it's so like they a basically fetch go. It's a fetch quest then. They go to get the team. It's a short montage, but like the weird, most numbing num thing is like, like oh, we got to go get Falcon Laircorn. Where is he? He's in the Game of Thrones server, and you find him riding a dragon, and he goes, "Winter, I say, winter is coming." <laughs> and then, and then Tasmanian Devil is in the Rick and Morty verse, and then Rick and Morty were experimenting on him, and they're like, no, we can't experiment with this thing. We're leaving with you, bye. And then the most bizarre thing is with Lola Bunny, because they find her in the DC universe doing Amazon training to become a strong Amazon woman. <laughs> it's so bizarre, and they make the comic panels like to simulate a real comic. It's just like, why are you putting so much, like, this is quite a bit of I'll give you. I'll so give bizarre. them points for trying to be original. I'll give them points for that. But. Uh, it's just, but it's just nothing. It's just an hour and a half commercial. The most cringiest thing that I remember seeing in this is Algae Rhythm makes a rhyme by. The accident. more you say that name, the more it does not sound like a real person. It's a real. <laughs> it's real. Algae Rhythm, like says a rhyme by accident, and then the Looney Tunes basically become, uh, like, oh, we're gonna rap now. So then they get Porky. Pig to do rap battles with them. It is so bizarre. Now, I don't really want to talk about this too much anymore because I just feel like it's not worth the time. But the point is, don't watch. There is one thing I would like to do with this film, and that is, when I rewatch it, I am drunk off my ass because I think it would be extremely entertaining. This is a movie I feel I'm like. Frankly, I actually would rather watch that movie high than drunk. Okay, yeah, yeah. high or drunk. Either way, influenced buy drugs in some sort of fashion because it's just it's nothing it's a nothing film there's nothing in it right. it's just bizarre that's my one word review is bizarre it's it's meh anyway that's space jam uh do you want to do yours next or i'll do mine because this is a movie that you were looking forward to i think mm -hmm. but i didn't really i just went along because it's the one genre i literally have given up on i didn't give zero fucks about Halloween Kills is second on my worst list. Three things. One, I don't like horror movies all that much. I really don't. I think the genre is... Because of how trash a lot of them are, right? Yeah. Well, I showed you the blob. Which video coming out Yes, soon? that... But that was that's all that was from a long time ago. That movie was yeah. from a long time ago. That was ago. just to help your taste palate. Cleanse but, your palate from that. Oh hair. my gosh. Anyway, Halloween, Halloween Kills. Kills is by far one of the worst. I don't even call it a horror movie in this, though. Because there's no scary moments. There's like maybe, well, there was like one. There's but there's not much name, like. Name one scary moment in the movie. Well, I mean, there are some like tense moments in terms of like, like suspense. But like it's nothing like outside of the ordinary, what you wouldn't expect out of a horror movie, I guess. 
I, in terms of, yeah, because, like I said, I'm a fan of the original Halloween. Same here. And I like, I'm... and I like the 2018 one as well. Thought it was, like, had some good passion and, like, actual good work mm -hmm. put behind it, especially See, for a low budget. Well, that's the thing, is how do you go from that to that? Because it's just, they, they're out of ideas. Like, Halloween just can't work as, like, a huge series. Like, there's nothing to Halloween. It's Michael Myers and he kills people and you need to stop and that's it. Unless you put, like, Jason and stuff in it. Michael versus Jason. Which they've already done. But yeah, I mean, in terms of Halloween Kills, I don't think it's the worst thing ever. To me, I consider it like just below average. Um, Cause it's not, it's not, it's not my next one on my list. Um, I, you know, like I said, I'm a fan of Halloween. I'm a fan of Michael. I Yeah, there's nothing, I mean, there's, I mean, you can watch this movie and still get some goodness out of it, I think. It, I think, but. Yeah. Well, I, there's some good things. I think the soundtrack, there's some oh. good. Definitely, soundtrack. yeah, definitely. Uh, soundtrack stuff. I but think the <laughs> they keep. I don't know if you've noticed this. <laughs> In every horror movie, they pull the same tropes every. Oh, everyone knows it. Every time. Everyone knows it. And everyone although there was one it. death in the movie, I actually did like. It's the staircase kill, when he literally just kills the guy, and I'm just like. That was cool. Oh, with the neck snap? Yeah. On the staircase, yeah. I don't know why I like that scene. I just, I guess I like neck snapping in movies and stuff. And especially since I played a Batman recently and I did the Red Hood campaign again. Because hmm. I just go. Well, the thing is about this movie that is just, like, I was wanting, like, out of, I was not expecting much at all from Halloween Kills. I was just expecting, like, hey, give me, like, the mob going after Michael. Like, that could be fun. Which they kind of gave, but at the same time, not too much. Because a lot of this movie, there's like the scenes in the hospital when they're like arguing, like the police department has failed us, you know, and they're chanting evil dies tonight. And they say that so many times, like it's some kind of like chant. And like they say it at the most thing, like they're, they think there's some patient in the hospital that's Michael, but it's not. Yeah. And they continue to chase after him. Then someone breaks free and then like just turns around and just goes, evil dies tonight. And then just run after us. It's so funny. It's like, yeah. like what is this chat? It's like, well, this, yeah, are we at a also, cheerleading the, the, or something? The patient had n like nothing to do with the, mov the movie at all. And it's just like, hey, it's not, it's like, no, it's not Michael. And then like they gave me one scene, which I like, which is when the mob finally confronts Michael and they like, surround him and then beat him and then Michael fights back. Like that's one thing I liked and, and they gave me in the movie. We forgot one thing. What? Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh yeah, she's not in the movie that much. Yeah, she doesn't, well she does like maybe like one thing, but for the rest of the movie, she's just like on the bed and- she's, Yeah, she's bedridden, she's, she's, she has nothing. Which I hate, I, I love her as an actress, but they did nothing with her. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing to her. She's just sidelined in the movie. She's, she's just there to say, the other thing about this movie is that they say really deep, try to meaningful stuff. Like when they accidentally kill the wrong patient, when he jumps out of the window, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff, they're like, oh my gosh, Michael is turning us into monsters. Evil is spreading through our veins. Like trying to make this some deep philosophical stuff. Like this is Halloween. It's Michael kills people. Don't make this some deep philosophical yeah, kind of like- what, that's not what the Halloween franchise is about. Above, above like, oh my gosh, the no. It's like, no, it's just, no. just give us Halloween. No, you know what I said after that scene in my head? No, you guys were just dicks and you just killed a random civilian. Mm -hmm. You kind of killed them. Yeah. It, yeah, it was just stupid. It was just stupid. Like people falling down the stairs and stuff and running past it was just so funny. Ugh. Like I said, there's there's some redeeming stuff in this. Like Michael is fine. Like they do Michael fine. Yeah, there was nothing talk. wrong with him. And he's fine. They they keep him, you know, like under wraps. Like keep him kind of mysterious. I don't think they like ruin Michael. Um, the soundtrack's good. It's competently made in terms of like oh, it looks nice. Um, it's 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 competently made. But there's just nothing really much there. And then they have one more film coming out called Halloween Ends. I think either next year or the year after. And I hope like. That's it. Like, I please let that I be. Might, it. I might watch it. I don't know. Uh, I'll probably will just as soon as I say. Anyway, Halloween Kills. Next on my list is Matrix Resurrections. Back to the Matrix. It was not good. It's just the first movie again, just made worse. It's. I still can't believe they made another. Like I said. And I'll say this again. It's like with Halloween. And a sequel Venom. that didn't need to happen. Yeah, it didn't need to happen. There was no need to make another Matrix movie. Matrix Resurrections is just nothing there. It's the first film again. Boring. It's 
Um, Keanu does a fine performance, like, in it, for his character. Um, but, like, and the villain is Neil Patrick Harris, and he's just more, like, you, you, you look more like a joke than an actual villain. You don't intimidate, you don't scare. And, like, it's just... And then we have, like, these side characters, and they have a bunch of dialogue that, like, is so jumbled. It's like, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what's happening. And they try to give us some backstory. It's just, it's nothing. And the action is honestly not that good. And it bombed. Like, nobody wanted this movie. Like, everyone... What's hilarious is if you watch the premiere mm -hmm. for the Matrix Resurrections, they go up to the director, and they ask, like, so why are new Matrix movies now? Why is this the right time for a Matrix movie? And she didn't say anything she she's like i don't know they just paid me it's like like they just paid me to make this movie and it bombed like like it bombed at the box office it lost so much money because it's yeah. like nobody nobody want to see it by around 30 minutes in i was just like i'm i'm out i'm just spaced out i'm just watching yeah. stuff and just not paying attention so yeah matrix resurrections uh not good uh next up f9 Um, I'm getting kind of tired of the Fast and Furious movies just because the main problem with the Fast I, and the Furious... I, the last Fast and the Furious movie was... I don't even know because I... Dude, I just don't care about it's that. It's fine. This is fine. Series. So let's see this. So F9 is just a standard action movie. Yes, it's got some great action scenes, but the thing is, it's like, I'm not invested because I know they, they can't get hurt. Literally in all these films... They have a... Uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 plot armor. Plot armor, yeah. They have plot armor. Because basically they, they never can die. They never can get hurt. The action scenes are fine, but there's no suspense. There's no tension when your because characters you know, are pretty much invincible. Yeah, because invincible. you know they're not going to get killed. Yeah. Same uh, problem Wait, with, is there any? There's not one main character who died in the series, has there been? There probably has been, but I don't remember. And But it's just like the main cast, they never do die. So it's just like... I don't get invested with the action scenes because I'm just like it, it's there's nothing here and the and the and the action they try to up every single time and it just gets so silly, like the literally <laughs> in the end they have to they build a car space shuttle to go into space because they have to get to one of the satellites like physically there it's just like oh gosh this is so that's it it's just it's just an action movie if you want want to see like cool action that's all this movie basically offers because in terms of plot, in terms of like character writing, mm -hmm. in terms of all these other things that I would like to get out of the movie, like a good character arc, a good plot, um, you know, uh, tension, actual emotion, it's just not there. Cause they, there's no tension cause they're not going to die. So yeah, that's F9. What's well, Loki for mine? Okay, well actually let, let me do Loki, let's just do that. So let's not, let's do this kind of quickly cause I uploaded a two hour review of this show. Well, it took me a while to actually get the guts to watch it because I, because I heard so many bad things, but then I watched a bit with him, and then I watched his review, then I'm just like, oh my gosh, I hate this show even more. But it's just so bad. It, yeah. It's if you, so bad. If you've seen my Loki review, you know that I do not, I despise the show. Like, in terms of what it does to the entire MCU timeline, and like, all the new world building stuff, it just makes no sense. This show cannot work. It doesn't work. If you want a more in-depth explanation on why everything in the show is stupid, makes no sense, go watch my Loki review. I thoroughly outline every single episode, all the stupidity so... in it, why this can't work, and just everything is wrong. Everything is wrong mind, in the show. I don't mind the actor, uh, Tom, Tom Hiddleston, or whatever his name is. No, he's great in it. I like him, but it's like we've been saying. Pacing, plot. Yeah, it's slow. And... Plot makes no sense. And um, logic. Well, again, then again, it's... Yeah, logic. <laughs> it's a Marvel movie, but... And also, the villains in this show are complete a-holes. Yeah, the, the TVA is full of... They're basically a bunch of time fascist Nazis. They are. Yeah. They are. They're just a Which, bunch of time fascists. When I watched this the first time with you guys, I was like, are we watching a... Uh, Something else, or what are we watching? I feel like I was watching something made by Marvel. I thought we were watching something else. It's just, yeah. Like I said, it just does that. Okay, so next on my list, Zack Snyder's Justice League. If someone were to ask me, oh, I hate the Justice like League who movie. is the most pretentious director you know of, I would instantly say Zack Snyder. He has his head so far up his ass, it is insulting. 
He's, Zack Snyder's Justice League is worse, is worse than Joss Whedon's. I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. It is worse. Okay? <laughs> Twice as long, unnecessary, still as stupid, still as dumb. Superman's character, like, arc in that is much worse. I would take Joss Whedon's over Zack's any day. Zack, stop writing movies, okay? <laughs> Until you get better or have someone else write your movie for you. You can direct. You can make cool visuals. You're good at that. You don't know how to write. So stop writing, okay? In the plot, it goes back a time to talk about, like, oh, in the first invasion with, like, Darkseid and his stuff. Darkseid's in this, and by the way, Darkseid's a pussy. Um, Darkseid comes in, and it's like, bringing his army, we're going to conquer this planet, because he conquered thousands. And then they bring the Atlanteans, they bring the gods of, you know, uh, Zeus and uh, whatever, and, like, the humans and stuff, and they all fight on the battlefield, Green Lanterns, whatever, um, you know, and then he's going to conquer this world. Dark side like comes in, like defeats Green Lantern, um, then gets one axe chopped into his shoulder by Ares, um, and then gets kicked off, and then he 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 passes out. It's like, wow, one blow to Dark Side? He's not that threatening, is he? It's like, wow. Yeah, by then, a character that's not even one of the main characters. Yeah, really. no, 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 here's the thing. So 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 they pass out, and then they're like, we send the invaders away. The first time ever. Earth was the very first planet ever to win against Darkseid. This is the first loss Darkseid ever had. But the most stupidest thing is that later in the later in the film, it is established that Darkseid forgot what planet he lost. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's like like Seven was like, hey, I found the world we lost the planet. I have oh, I figured it out. It's like. You forgot the only time you ever lost a battle. You forgot the planet. Did somebody use the Men in Black thing on them? Does your ship have coordinates that keep track of where you've been in the universe? You could use that. It's so stupid. Why does that sound like a Star Wars uh, Last Jedi or uh, Rise of Skywalker plot there? It, it is. It is a stu it, it, it's as dumb as Rise of Skywalker. It may be even dumber. There's, there's so much There's so much bad in this. Like, there's, there's, there's this other thing like where... Um, the Am like where in Steppenwolf gets the goes for the first box where the Amazons are all standing around it with their arrows and stuff. Right. And it's just like, and he uses a boom tube to get in, right? This like teleportation tube. And then the Amazon's like, we're going to fight. And then like the Amazon queen, whatever her name is, I don't care, grabs the box and then like starts to run out. It's like, close the gates to seal him in. I'm just like, he has a teleporter. This is not going to do anything. <laughs> and then two minutes later, just that, that's just what happens. He just jumps out. <laughs> It's like, you are all idiots. Oh, by the way, the music in this film is such garbage. It is pure garbage that, cause, cause there's like, like there's this scene where like, like Flash is saving Iris, like from a car crash. And the music that plays is so cringe. Same with Aquaman when he's on his little slow-mo walk out into the ocean. It plays like some kind of like jazz or whatever. It's like, what is this music? Oh, one more stupid thing. I'm sorry, I have to go on. There's a scene in, in, uh, in the beginning where, like, Batman's trying to find Aquaman, right? To recruit him for, like, the Justice League. Then Aquaman, like, takes off his jacket and throws it to, like, the, the beach side. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I'm not going to join you. He swims off. And then, like, the villagers that he, like, hangs around with, like, to help, one of them starts to sing. And then they all jump into singing, like, it's some kind of praise or worship to the Aquaman. And then one of them walks down, takes the jacket, and just... <sighs> Sniffs it like if it's some kind of drug. It's like, like, like smelling it like oh, Aquaman's deodorant. Just, who writes this garbage, Zach? You are an. I bet it's not moron. even. I bet it's not even Zach. I bet it's like a thirteen-year-old with like some fetishes or something. He like. has a fetish for just writing this stupid stuff. Bottom line is this: like I said, I will die on the hill that Zack Snyder's Justice League is worse than the Joss Whedon's. Okay. It, Zack Snyder needs to stop writing the movies. He just needs to be the director for the visuals. That's it. He's good at that. He's good at that. But in terms of writing, just stay away. Okay? You, we've had Man of Steel, which is not good. Batman v Superman, which we both hate. I I think that's still one of my top hated movies. And man. then we have this. Like, just no. No. And I, I might make a video discussing more about it in the future. But yeah, Zack Snyder's Justice League went on a little bit of rant there. Let's stop there. Now I'm gonna talk about this one, the marksman. Liam Neeson standard action movie. It's I didn't, was I didn't whatever. watch it. It was whatever. It's just kind of like you, what do you expect from a Liam Neeson? Well, yeah, I, I saw the trailer for it, and I'm like, I know exactly how this is gonna go down. It's gonna go fine. It's just 
it's just standard. It's generic. It's that's it. That's just it. There's nothing. There's nothing there. wrong. And with there are you. stupid things in there because there's stupid. There's stupid stuff like that he should be doing that he just doesn't. Like in regards to money, you know how like you can track credit cards when they're used. He's like, stop using your credit card. That's how they're. That's how they're tracking you. And then they have a cash, a bunch mode of cash because this movie involves cash that's like stolen. Right. That Liam Neeson has, and he's like, now nah, we're just gonna burn it. It's like, dude, use that cash rather than your card to so they can't track you. <laughs> It's stupid. It's just, it's like three or four out of ten. All right. Next up, <laughs> Godzilla versus Kong. Didn't, didn't watch it. It's pretty much as you expect. It's, it's not because I didn't like it. It's just I didn't see the point of this. Godzilla versus Kong happens in about the last 45 minutes or so. Also with Mecha Godzilla, because Mecha Godzilla's in it. Has he really? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, but the rest of the stuff with the humans is just as you expect. It's just like it's just people are just like, we don't want this. Show us Godzilla Kong. You know, it's like it's overly long and it's just bringing out this plot that no one cares about. It's like everyone came to see God Godzilla and Kong fight. Just just do that. Like just make this like an hour and twenty minutes. Like make it as short as you can and just show the fight, like and stuff. And just to me, it's about what I expected. It's just like it's, it's just a generic. Stupid action movie. Anyway. Uh, okay, go through these quickly so we can get to the good stuff. Um, next up is Black Widow. This was not worth the wait. People have been wanting a Black Widow movie for so long. Our cat just entered the room. He may jump up here. Um, why do I say our cat? You don't live here. This is my cat. <laughs> One of my favorite YouTubers who I watch, Mauler, made like a video a few days after it came out, four hours long, ranting about it. Um, Cause it, yeah, it's not worth the wait. People, people wanted a, a, a Black Widow movie. They got it like after she died in Endgame, like a prequel between like Civil War and whenever, she, Infinity War, I guess. Mm -hmm. And just the plot makes no sense. I could go on for hours. Things like, oh, she has a sister that for some reason she hasn't been looking for all this time in any of the Marvel films, even though she still knew she existed. like. Did you forget your sister? You had a sister. It's been so long because I watched it like last year in May or was close to when it came out. There was the most funniest visual with um, Florence Pugh's character, where she's like on this like landing pad. She's about to destroy like the ship that Drakov's on, and then Nat's like, "No, don't do it, sis." And then the <laughs> sister's like, "It's been fun," and she stabs the sword in, like the propellers, and then an explosion happens, and she's like, "It's in slow mo." So when the explosion happens, she's like, do, 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 do. just like. It's so funny, and it, it looks so fake as well. It was not worth it, not worth the wait at all. It's not that well. Nothing makes sense in it. If you want more in-depth, just watch Mulder's video, because he does that way better than I ever could. Candyman is next. Candyman, Ugh. pretty much just standard. The original Candyman is worth a watch. Yes. Watch the original Candyman. Watch the original. It's an underrated, under, underappreci <laughs> underappreciated. Have you uh, noticed horror. that about horror movies? We just keep saying that. Just watch the original. Watch the original. Yeah. Because it's true. Yeah. You don't need to make a rehash of everything. It's yeah. This one was just like, so like one. Of, it's just it suffers from stupid plot. Like a lot it of horror movies. It didn't even look do. like a Candyman. It didn't even look like that. Well, it was stupid in this way, because um, there's like there's like the first incident of like you know like um, oh a black guy got killed was there's this actual guy who actually gives candy to children, mm -hmm. you know for just like being friendly and stuff. But when he does it, he like crawls through a hole in the wall, and then he has like this face when he's giving the candy. He's like, dude, like that's not how you give candy to children. Hey, you want some candy? It's like, you're you're trying to be creepy. Like, this is not, you're trying to give candy to children, like in a friendly way. You don't do it like, and don't say anything. You don't, you know, you say, hey, you want some candy? It's like, he's just like, just like that. It's stupid. <laughs> and then like the whole plot, we're all stupid. And then like characters, motivations change for no reason. It's like, like, oh, this guy's evil now just cause plot. And then like, <laughs> And then it's like, oh, oh, this guy is becoming the candy man, and this guy next will be the candy man, and just watch the original. Just watch the original, okay? The original's better, okay? <laughs> and then when they, and then they put in Tony Todd, because Tony Todd was the original candy man in the original movie. He makes an appearance in this, but his face is CGI. I'm just like, 
Just Why? Get, I don't know. Why? It looks so fake. Just watch the original, okay? Right, now we're getting to the other stuff. Quickly, I want to mention One Division. It was good at first, but pretty much by episode four, it fell apart in terms of the story. And it made Wanda a villain. Because I was like, there's this whole... It does. Because the whole town that's like under this whatever spell, whatever thing, I thought it would be like some other villain who has kind of like Wanda under their control or whatever. Right. But no, Wanda made this happen completely herself. I knew it was happening and didn't do anything about it. I was like, wow, Wanda, you're a piece of garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wow. Because there's, there's literally, there's literally like, parents who come up pleading to Wanda, like, like, my kid's been stuck in the room, the her room, the entire time. Just please let her come out. It's like, jeez, Wanda, did you know this was happening? It's like, it's like, because of the implication, the implications that she did. And it's just like, well, that's terrible. And the whole fight next time. And then, like, I've made a video on this already, so I'm not going to go too much in depth. Okay.